Hi, I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Chief Solution Officer for Digital Towers with Nats. Welcome to the Heathrow Digital Tower Lab. I'm really excited to uh, have you in here today and I want to show you some really exciting applications and solutions that we've got that run on Searage's Digital Tower platform. We're now focusing on the video wall, controller work positions, and also the artificial intelligence engine, Amy, from Series Technologies, all of which work together for a more efficient air traffic control and apron control tower solution. Uh, in Heathrow's uh, lab, the uh, video wall's currently showing our north runway on what is uh, probably a typical uh, London um, afternoon now, uh, slightly overcast, um, but uh, still enough visibility that we can see uh, the runway. And um, so the video wall is providing panoramic uh, views of uh, the north side of the airfield at the moment. We also have uh, panoramic views that we can display for the south side too. Uh, and that's augmented with overlaid radar data, which you see uh, showing as labels on the moving aircraft. Blue labels indicate an outbound aircraft, so you can see quite a queue of departures building. And brown labels, uh, if you see any of those, will be indicating uh, arriving flights, which predominantly at the moment are being handled on the south side of the airport. The controllers uh, look out of the window as they do in any air traffic control tower, and a uh, key part of their uh, controlling function is to monitor the takeoffs and particularly the landings uh, to make sure that they are safe and then to ensure that the aircraft clears the runway uh, so that the next flight can safely use uh, the, the same runway. So in terms of what the controllers are doing in the traditional air traffic control tower looking out of the window, Without the augmentation of the overlaid uh, video, they're basically monitoring the flights to check that the tail clears uh, two key trigger areas uh, for a landing clearance and then to ensure that the overall runway safety strip is cleared so that um, uh, aircraft can operate without any risk of uh, collisions. So, that safety uh, management works uh, well in conditions where the controllers can see clearly out of the window. But with the air traffic control tower here at Heathrow being 87 metres tall, it goes into cloud um, in certain days. And with the airport also uh, being uh, more than four kilometres uh, long because of the, the length of the two runways, um, it also means that as the visibility reduces, then parts of the apron areas, parts of the terminals and parts of the runway uh, can become obscured by the reduced visibility. During those conditions, the air traffic controllers rely on radar data, um, and that is much lower fidelity than the out of the window view. It also is uh, only on a one second update, so it's, uh, it's slower than real time. The video, however, uh, operates at full 4K resolution. It's ultra high definition. It's the highest uh, video quality um, in the industry today. Uh, and we've been running that here at Heathrow and in lots of our solutions since 2018. Um, the 4K video runs at 25 frames per second. So it's high fidelity, uh, rapid refresh so that the, the video output is very smooth. And that means that the radar data has to be processed by the Searage Digital Tower platform to ensure that the, the two um, pieces of information stay closely attached to each other uh, at all times. In addition to that, running on the back of the um, uh, lab, we have our AMI server. Uh, now, AMI is uh, the AI engine from Searage. AMI powers all of our applications uh, that are AI-based. Um, and in particular here at Heathrow, we've been testing our hold line surveillance system, which is designed to help the controllers in conditions when they're unable to see as clearly uh, as they can uh, today and in uh, better weather conditions. So at night time, uh, hours of darkness operation and in reduced visibility, tower and cloud operations, uh, rather than relying on radar, we're aiming to have uh, the controllers rely on AI, AMI, looking at optical data from camera sensors and processing that in 25th of a second segments, checking that the aircraft tail 
to the pixel, last pixel of its tail against a pixel line uh, of the edge of the runway safety strip is uh, cleared by the aircraft. Now we've been running Amy uh, here at Heathrow continuously uh, since 2018. Uh, we've carried out analysis of more than 40,000 arrivals into Heathrow, uh, all different aircraft types, different liveries, different times of day, different conditions. And the output of that analysis has proven that Amy's um, accuracy and repeatability is really quite incredible. Um, and on that basis, uh, we're also now testing uh, the same functionality in Singapore. Um, and uh, our intention is to further develop and refine this model until we get to the point where we can deploy it as part of the operational suite that you're seeing uh, today because everything else in terms of video wall and controller work position is already part of the solutions from Nats and Searage. In terms of what you're looking at with video wall and controller work position, this is uh, a standard to the Searage solution. It's designed for operational people uh, like me. I'm an ex-air traffic controller uh, working in uh, tower and approach. And from that perspective, um, we require uh, resilient operations we also require to be able to operate looking at areas of the airport um, that currently from a physical tower perspective are perhaps distant or obscured. So while the video wall provides the controllers in the tower, in the digital tower, with a shared situation awareness, which is enhanced by the augmentation of overlays and, video data, uh, and, and radar data onto video, the controller work positions enable the controllers to access camera views uh, which um, sh can show them areas where they may be obscured by terminal buildings, hangars, um, or they may be distant uh, with Terminals 2 to Terminals 5 here at Heathrow uh, being more than three and a half kilometres apart. So in digital terms, we can bring one terminal uh, and one set of apron areas and taxi lanes uh, to an air traffic controller and put uh, another air traffic controller looking at the other end of the airport right alongside each other to work optimally uh, but to get much better views and augmented and supported by Amy, uh, which is something which gives the controllers a significant enhancement over what uh, the today's operation and conventional tower provides. So in addition to that uh, augmentation, some of the other benefits also mean that because the information is on video wall, it's also showing on uh, controller work position video, but it's also providing, for example, the AI outputs for when the aircraft vacates the runway or any other parameters that we're using AI for onto things like the map data on the, the radar top-down view. So that means that an air traffic controller can now look in any direction, whether it's uh, out of the window to the video wall, uh, to their areas of responsibility on their controller work position, or head down on the radar display, and um, they can see the information they need to see as quickly as possible. They can provide it with triggers and support from AI as quickly as possible, and they don't need to necessarily maintain a scan pattern that they do in today's uh, physical tower environment. With all of the three layers of video and data presentation from a Searage uh, platform solution uh, in a digital tower uh, being provided, it provides extra resilience um, uh, to that system. So in the unlikely event of a failure of a physical piece of hardware like a video wall panel, then the panoramic view can be uh, selected and monitored on the individual controller work positions, um, as well as the uh, additional views being selected through uh, instant um, preset views. But it means that the controller at uh, each workstation is able to maintain and continue the operation uh, regardless of any kind of uh, system failures. Each workstation is independent and therefore not affected by the other. Talking of not being affected by the other, the uh, PTZ functions, for example, when you select electronic binoculars, when you select those, all of that selection is on each individual controller work position. That means there are no pop-up windows appearing on the video wall and no distractions for other air traffic controllers inside of a tower. This is particularly re relevant for complex operations and air traffic control towers or apron towers where there are multiple controllers within that same ops room. So in short, the Sirius Digital Tower provides multi-layers of information through one platform, 
with AI from Amy providing additional support to ensure a safe and more efficient operation. So we're running a couple of other applications um, on the controller work position in the Heathrow lab at the moment. Um, in addition to the uh, video footage um, of uh, Hong Kong, um, we're also running the application for our stand management tool and our airport data dashboard tool, um, both of which are particularly relevant to airport operations and apron control teams. Uh, but clearly feed into the rest of the operation in terms of its efficiency. So our stand planning tool is uh, web-based. It runs on the Sirius platform, as does the digital tower or apron control applications. Um, and it enables the operation uh, to carry out stand planning functions uh, as they do today, but with uh, significant uh, autonomous support. So there are two modes in stand planning. Uh, we have a strategic mode which uh, enables the user uh, to more manually uh, interact with the system in a kind of what-if scenario. Um, so it's very much a uh, pre-day um, of operation um, kind of uh, uh, functionality. Uh, but in tactical mode on the day of operation, the system will autonomously produce a stand plan based on hard and soft rules. Hard sort of rules being things like uh, the aircraft type uh, that can be accommodated on a particular parking stand, and then the soft rules uh, being more uh, adjacency to VIP gates and airline preferences. So the system will automatically produce a plan ready for uh, the day of operation. It will then take information uh, from uh, the live operation when it's in tactical mode and will make adjustments uh, to the plan uh, managing your stands uh, for you and indicating uh, in, a, in changes, for example, uh, an aircraft that is running late um, and affecting now another aircraft occupying that parking stand uh, and offering a different uh, stand for the uh, oncoming aircraft. If there are any rules that are broken, they'll never be the hard rules uh, because those are um, uh, unchangeable. Um, Clearly, you wouldn't want to put a Boeing 747 on a stand which is not capable of accepting something that large. But it may be possible to change a parking stand um, and affect one of the soft rules uh, with uh, just a minor inconvenience. So what it will do is will offer that change and enable the, um, the stand manager to make a decision as to whether they want to accept that uh, rule impact on the soft constraint. So. The aim of the, the stand planning tool is to make it more efficient and also to enable um, the uh, operations team to be able to optimise the operation and potentially use other uh, means. So we've all, uh, already looked at things like our CDM integrations, but using the airport's data dashboard function, uh, that application allows uh, the information you have on your airport's operation, historic or live on the day, uh, to be demonstrated to you in various formats, graphical, heat maps, um, and uh, a, a, another uh, list type of um, methods. So that depending on the type of information you want to look at, you can look at it in the uh, its simplest format. So it'll tell you anything from the runway occupancy time by particular aircraft type um, and particular airlines uh, to the efficiency of your gate management uh, and how uh, much uh, asset um, value you're getting out of each of those stands, making sure that there are not too many gaps, but not too many weights either. So you're able to run um, scenarios requesting particular queries or run it as live. And this is all part uh, of the plan do review cycle, where effectively we're providing autonomous stand planning ready for the tactical day of operation with autonomous support and then the ability to measure your uh, operation either historically or during the day of operation and to be able to uh, review and make adjustments in order to optimize that operation of the day while also benefiting from the fact that it's running on the Searage platform able to take in video data, use artificial intelligence support uh, and other elements
that are key to the searage uh, product. I've loaded our New York uh, LaGuardia Delta Airlines ramp uh, control room facility application uh, into the Heathrow lab. It's running on one of the controller work positions, not quite in its layout as it is in the operational facility in LaGuardia, uh, but uh, just so that I can run through a demonstration using uh, recorded footage from that site. Um, so this is as recorded in the operational system. Uh, and what I'm showing at the moment is uh, the areas of responsibility for Delta Airlines. Uh, they have uh, their own terminal um, and a considerable operation, uh, which they had previously operated from two apron control towers. Uh, you can see in the two panoramic views, there's an apron tower here, um, and then there's also an apron control tower over on the right-hand side. The terminal pier that's in the middle, we're looking out from either side. So you can simultaneously look into two uh, blind cul-de-sacs, which previously two separate teams had to monitor um, using that uh, two physical locations. By going digital with panoramic views uh, of each of the two um, cul-de-sacs shown here, the controllers are able to operate from a single facility, a single digital apron tower rather than two physical facilities, which means that you can either combine uh, the operation or um, the controllers are able to co coordinate more effectively with each other. You can quite clearly see, as per all of our other digital tower solutions, uh, whether it's for air traffic control or open control, as it is in this case, uh, we have the benefit of adding in uh, additional surveillance data and also overlaid information. So on our panoramic displays, uh, the controllers can simultaneously see uh, out to the runway, though that's beyond their area of um, responsibility, but into the parallel taxiways that then uh, they feed and also take traffic from, with radar data coming, uh, which can be in multiple formats, uh, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast, or uh, from ASDX, uh, ASM GCS, multilateration, call it what you will, uh, information uh, which comes in standard format and can be read by the digital tower, digital apron system. So that gives the, the apron controllers uh, for Delta identification, which is secure and labeled directly to the aircraft. Uh, and you can see also additional information in terms of their destinations uh, and other relevant information for those controllers. Uh, the gates themselves are also digitally labeled, so it helps in terms of uh, quick identification um, of location, but also in addition looking at some of the information that's displayed on the workstation here. Uh, each controller can interact with their own uh, application without affecting anybody else in the control room. Uh, they have views uh, which um, provided in a map top-down format uh, where the aircraft likewise are labelled but um, are shown in a, in a map um, view so that even in reduced visibility conditions um, the controllers can continue to operate uh, using this fully integrated operational system. Um, you're seeing in here now that the controller can manipulate the map, turn it round, look at it from whichever direction. So we're now actually looking at it from a similar direction that we see on the panoramic screens uh, with this pier and this pier showing and the two cul-de-sac areas where Delta Airlines uh, operate to and from. So with the panoramic arrays, they also have um, pan tilt zoom cameras, which uh, the controllers, the open controllers, uh, can uh, activate and uh, move to zoom, uh, pan uh, and tilt towards areas of interest. So we're just scanning through those, uh, those various points right now as the map is then moved and zoomed likewise. So full control for each person inside of the apron control center, uh, accessing the, the apron tower application on their own controller work position without affecting anybody else uh, and enabling them to see uh, all the data they need to see immediately. Now in addition to uh, what uh, the human operators are able to do with this digitized view, uh, we're also moving our apron application uh, into the realms of artificial intelligence support and we see on our uh, screen just here as part of the controller work position 
uh, a pre-recorded demonstration, which in fact in this case uh, is from Dubai, uh, showing a fly Dubai uh, aircraft uh, in the middle of a turn. Um, the AI can be seen where it's, uh, the model is identifying each of the um, vehicles and objects that are around the aircraft carrying out the turn, and the aircraft itself is identified by the AI model. So that then produces an automated output in message format, which you see uh, scrolling through, which can be sent back into the airport operations database, um, stand planning systems, and also into uh, collaborative decision-making CDM uh, type engines. So we're also seeing here that the milestones, as well as a messaging output, uh, we're seeing them in a, a graphical output for this stand, uh, Echo 4, and this particular turn. And we can see uh, aircraft arrives on stand, uh, first passenger off, baggage, catering, uh, and various other service vehicle milestones uh, that are currently configured for this particular display. Where the arc is showing is completed, that particular turn uh, milestone is completed. Here we see a milestone around baggage where the baggage handling is running slightly behind where the AI model uh, expects it to be for this particular type of aircraft and this particular type of operation in terms of how the turn should be progressing. So we're running amber slightly behind schedule. This is the arc that we're aiming for. So this would be the point at which uh, an operator um, that is uh, managing the stand uh, turn uh, or potentially in an apron control room like the one that we're showing here for Delta uh, could also get further information and understand more around uh, the readiness of, uh, of each of the aircraft uh, turns but particularly from a stand and a turn management perspective where you have an indication that the turn is not progressing as it should do according to the AI tracking then uh, there is an opportunity here to intervene and carry out some kind of uh, resolution to get that turn back on schedule. So all in all, the suite of um, applications that run as part of our April Control um, solution is fully configurable, fully tailorable in terms of having additional information from radar and other surveillance sources that are available on the airfield. Uh, from other agencies um, or within your existing uh, data pool, uh, and then displaying that in the most effective way to a, uh, a controller, in this case, an apron controller at LaGuardia. I've now loaded uh, our Hong Kong system um, or at least a playback of our uh, Hong Kong system uh, onto the controller work position inside of the Heathrow lab. Um, what we're looking at here is a system that's used by Air Traffic Control, Airport Operations Center and Apron Control um, with each workstation fully configurable to uh, each of those individual operational areas needs. Uh, I'm showing a range of them here, so they're not quite um, as an individual controller work position would be displayed in Hong Kong, but just for demonstration purposes. So the first area to have a look at really is um, on the panoramic view of the runway here, we see a Cathay Pacific Boeing 747 landing. But uh, the key area to look at here in terms of the function is the pan tilt zoom, uh, the electronic binoculars are focused on uh, that Boeing 747 and are automatically tracking and zooming the object. Um, that means that the controller, uh, be they in apron or air traffic control, can look away, monitor other uh, areas of the operation and come back uh, where their binoculars are automatically focused and following the object that they wanted to see before. So particularly useful in terms of maintaining situational awareness. Anyone that's used binoculars inside of an air traffic control tower or an apron tower knows it takes time to find the object and it also then uh, means that you lose a wider view as to what's going on on your operation. So you can't maintain the view through those binoculars for too long. We can with the digital system. On the panoramic views, we have views of two apron areas here, but we also have overlaid data from radar, we have stand and gate numbers, and we also have uh, the CDM information from the airport operations system. So that provides us with uh, information on the status of aircraft turns as they progress towards departure. Looking uh, at a more zoomed in area, we can see the target off blocks time, target start approval times of uh, an aircraft. 
and um, then we can compare that against more of the information that's going on visually. So for example, where a target off box time uh, may appear to be quite static, uh, by looking out of the window digitally, we're able to see whether that turn is progressing exactly as we expect it to, and just manually uh, observe and be able to react uh, and understand that maybe a target off blocks time will or won't be maintained. Uh, we also have alerting status. So on this particular view, we're now seeing an inbound flight which uh, does not have a gate allocated to it. So we saw a, a, an alert while that situation existed. But the panoramic views, the pan tilt zoom camera, and the overlay data all add to give you a much richer uh, picture as to what's going on and a better way to operate your airport and react uh, more quickly to situations as they develop.